as if like someone tried something and then, oh, I'm sorry, it was a mistake. It was disastrous. It destabilized not only Iraq, but the entire region. And the problem with, with the, the invasion is that they didn't have a plan. Before answering was it necessary or not, calling it a mistake is kind of like disrespectful of Iraqis. I mean, as if like someone tried something and then, oh, I'm sorry, it was a mistake. It was disastrous. It destabilized not only Iraq, but the entire region. And the problem with, with the, the invasion is that they didn't have a plan or they were selling all of these plans saying that we are here to modernize Iraq, to bring democracy. But then when they arrived, they didn't know what they are going to do next day. They didn't have any plans. They dismissed the entire military. They dismissed all the administrations. And they wanted to start over, thinking that building a state could take like a one or two days. And that, that is the disaster. The human element wasn't at any point involved in the decision making of what happened in Iraq. Despite it's being based on lies, Iraqis, they understood that it's important that the regime has changed, that Saddam is no more. But they hoped for a real change, which actually didn't happen. It actually was destabilized. I mean, and to mention the, unfortunately, the civil sectarian war in Iraq, which led, uh, dis, uh, resulted in killing thousands of people. Uh, it dismantled the, the entire Iraqi social cohesion. Iraqis are in, 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 in a problem of trusting each other. And it's not their fault, is that the failed political system led to this. Because when you vote for the election and you want your representatives to work in the parliament, you are expecting them to deliver. But unfortunately, this didn't happen because they came to the agreement that a president should be Kurdish, prime minister should be Shia, and the spokesman of the parliament should be Sunni, and each one will have someone represent the other ethnicity. And that is, that is a disaster. There is nothing about qualifications. There is nothing about someone who, is this person qualified to be the prime minister? No, this question is not being posed. The question is like, which uh, sect are you representing? And imagine how this is being reflecting on the population. What engagement? I mean, let's go back to 2007, when Bush landed in Ambar. And he said, we are giving you weapons and money. Go fight on behalf of the United States. Take down the terrorism. What happened later? Look at Ambar. It's, 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 it's even a disastrous area. When Daesh came, most of those people who worked in Sahwa have been brutally executed. And now it's the same, the problem is that it's the same approach of the United States. Now, because of the rising of the uh, Shia sectarianism and, and uh, Sh sorry, Shia extremism, those who are uh, uh, bumping the, the US uh, location sites, etc., they say, like, let's try the same approach. Let's deal with them, let's communicate with them, let's engage with them for the hope that they will stop sending uh, the rockets at us. This doesn't work. You have to focus on building a functional system, not keep feeding the dysfunctional system. As I said during the panel, I think this requires an honest reconciliation between the government of Iraq, no matter which government it is, the current one, the next one. I think it, this should be uh, uh, a rule. This should be uh, uh, what the Iraqi government starts with a nation, nationwide reconciliation with the Iraqi population, that we should start working together, that we should, they, they should first apologize for what they did and then move on to discuss how can we work together toward a better future. I mean, look, look, look at, at the, the, the challenge that Iraq is facing of the climate change. Literally, and I am not exaggerating when I say that people in Basra which produce 60% of the Iraqi oil, they do not have clean water to drink. I spoke to many friends in Basra, they say their income is distributed or divided into 
30 percent uh, water not to drink, water to clean the clothes because you cannot use that water. For 50 percent to buy drinking water and the rest to buy food. I mean, imagine like having to live all of this, knowing that you are producing 60 percent of the Iraqi oil, yet they do not have water to, to drink. The, the, the lands are drying out and people are left with no other options. I think, I think this, is, this is the most dehumanization process we have ever been in. I think, well, Saddam played a, 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 a terrifying role in deepening the sectarianism between Iraqis. However, on the basic level of Iraqis, whether they are Sunni or Shia, sectarianism wasn't a big deal for them. They have understood who they are and they felt safe to express themselves. But the problem is that this started also with Saddam. When the US invasion came, they decided that the system is going to be based on sectarianism. That, as I mentioned, a, a, a Shia prime minister, a Sunni spokesman of the parliament, a Kurdish uh, 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 president, and so on in every administration, the ministries, etc., etc. They deepened the sectarian system. They presented, uh, presented it as the way of governance, and the logical result is sectarianism on the basic level. I think Qatar can play a very important role in helping Iraq to transition from completely dependent on oil to clean energy. I think that's what needed in Iraq now, because it's also going to help the social cohesion. It's also going to help stability. I think that is one of the main areas of uh, interest between Iraq and Qatar. It can play a very positive role, but it can also help Iraq with becoming a more neutral country, not being on the side of Iran or on the side of China or on the side of the United States. Iraq needs to be a stabilizing actor, not a source of destabilization. I think, I think learning from Qatar could benefit Iraq in this regard. Because, I mean, we know, we know the, the, the role Qatar played in stabilizing relations. It's also the negotiations of Doha between the United States and, 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 and uh, uh, Taliban. I think, I think that, is, that is something important that Iraq can benefit from.